Hi everyone, Keisha Howard here, and I am so excited to speak to the person that we're about to speak to. Uh, Aaron Balding is the Director of Content Strategy at PUBG, but his whole career has consisted of being in tech, production, and video games. Uh, he's one of the first people who actually got hired uh, in the esports capacity at ESPN, and so he knows uh, from a very long period of time, not a very long, but a, a substantial amount of time, like what this industry has looked like and what the community of gamers has looked like. And I'm just really excited to speak to you today. So thank you for, you know, spending some time with me. I am really excited to uh, get some of those insights that you have. Well, you know, Keisha, I'm, it's great to be with you and I'm so happy that you're doing this. It's, it's super important. And, and, you know, Anything, any part I can play in helping you do what you do, I'm, I'm, I'm there. It's, it's, it's an honor. I appreciate that so much. Um, admittedly, this is, I, I, even though most people might know of me, this is like actually my first time trying to do something in this particular format. So I, I definitely uh, appreciate that a lot. So let's get started. Well, before we really get started, like let's acknowledge the current events of 2020. Uh, it's been a very challenging year for, for many of us. And, um, you know, before we pretend like everything is awesome, uh, you know, how have you been coping with, you know, this roller coaster that the first six months has been? Yeah, you know, I think I'm like a lot of people where I'm, I'm still in it. I'm still in the middle of it. Uh, that, that part where you take a pause and look back and see how you've changed from that point to this point, I haven't really done that. It's, it's I don't know how healthy that is or not, but this year has uh, been consistent with uh, throwing new challenges at us, shall we say, and giving us uh, uh, new things to think about, uh, new things to to deal with, right? Between um, the, the 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 pandemic and all of the the ripple effects of that, and then the the social uh, awakening and all the ripple effects of that. Um, it's manifesting lots of different ways, right? So the short answer is I don't know how I've been coping. Just, you know, I was here yesterday. I'm here today. I, I'll, I'll call that I'll call that a win. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that right now just surviving and keeping your sanity is, is yeah. a huge win here. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I, as you know, I'm super into to video games and, and technology. And I, I think that and not that I think, but I know that that's where we're going. That's where we're heading in our future. So, but you've known that apparently you've known that for quite some time. You've, you've advocated for the gamer lifestyle. You've been in the esports community for a, a significant period of time. Um, like what was it that motivated you to even be in this space to begin with? Um, it's, it, it's funny. I wish I could some, say it was something really profound, but uh, when I started at IGN as part of the, the founding group of editorial staff there, um, it really was just taking the experiences that we knew people were having around video games and uh, professionalizing and popularizing it. So that is to say, um, you're talking about a group of people who'd grown up playing Super Mario Brothers, playing Street Fighter, playing uh, sports games on the Sega Genesis uh, with family, with siblings, with friends, for hours at a time gathered around a television, right? Like that was the experience we were drawing from. And so when it came time to take that culture and apply it to new games, the, this modern contemporary video game industry that we have now, um, that's where we were coming from. We knew that those experiences, that's what it was all about, the emotions, the time and place where you were. Very similar to how music can take you back to a certain time and place, very similar to how uh, sense and, and taste uh, your sense of smell and your sense of taste can take you back to a very specific time. We knew and felt and shared with each other these video game experiences where, man, when I beat this level, I remember I was with so-and-so's house using this controller and his mom said this. That's what we were bringing to the, to the table. And we were, doing, we were doing things that didn't have a name in terms of uh, styles of content, what's now known as social media, what's now known as branded content, what's now known as, uh, 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 you know, building your brand as an individual person with the game industry. We were doing that stuff before it had a name. So it really came from a very simple place of when we talk about at this time, uh, when we talk about Grand Theft Auto 2, when we talk about the original Halo 
colon combat evolved. When we talk about these games, we were coming at it from from this perspective of uh, we know how people are going to play this stuff. We know what they're going to react to and how they're going to talk about it. So let's uh, package it up, present it, and talk about this stuff in the same way and uh, build that rapport and uh, really cover that news from that perspective. And uh, we just went from there. So how I got from there to here, not really sure, but it's been some version, some version of that the whole time. I mean, that's super impressive that you were able to have the foresight to see that there was something happening there, right? You know, not all of us can like see it before it happens. We, we kind of jump on the trend afterwards. Um, with that being said, you know, I, one of the experiences that I've had, you know, I, I started the organization Sugar Gamers 11 years ago. And in those 11 years, it was pre-Gamergate, pre-Me Too, pre-Black Lives Matters. And it was a, a lot to like push through that, that industry. So I know you started even earlier than I did. Um, how did you, you know, like deal with possibly being underestimated, overlooked, uh, looked down upon? Like, how did you deal with some of the things that may have been thrown your way while you were navigating this space? Well, well, first, it's not past tense, right? It never stops. And I can, I can only share, I can only share. It's terrible. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I can only share it this way. And it, it's where I'm from, how I'm built, right? It's what I got from, from my dad. Uh, he, he prepared me. He prepared me for uh, as much as he could for the, for the life that he knew I was going to have as a, as a professional, as a black man. As, as everything that goes that goes with those, those that duality right and that's that's how we describe it it's a duality um again i'll just speak for myself i won't speak for you but i occupy two spaces two lanes at the same time um and as you mature you get better at them so there's uh, a lot of comedians have a different use a use a, a, a euphemism but you know there's you speak job interview and you and you speak hood uh you speak professionally and, and, and handle yourself professionally, and you're also yourself at home, right? And so I learned from a very early age to just embrace that and get good at both and appreciate both and, and develop skills in both arenas. Um, sometimes one gets a little ahead of the other, that creates its own opportunities and challenges, but that's really, that, that's really what I got from my, from my dad. And it, it's what I saw in my family. Um, you know, my family is pretty, uh, pretty diverse, uh, and and pretty dynamic, pretty dynamic, and so we taught each other. I was taught how to do that. Um, I can see how not having that, not having uh, that education, that type of education growing up, uh, could be a challenge. But you know, you're talking about I have, you know, an aunt who was uh, a, a poet and a playwright, in addition to being a teacher and raising a whole bunch of kids. My cousins. Um, I've got an uncle fluent in Russian, multiple PhDs, uh, was, was part of the, 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 the social awareness movements that happened in the 60s. Um, I've, I've got my, my, direct, my direct line, my dad, who, um, who taught me everything else, basically, uh, how to be professional, how to advance. So took all that stuff, didn't appreciate that as I was coming up like a lot of young people. Um, but then as I became an adult, it was everything. It was everything. So that's how I got it. That's how I've dealt with the, 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 some of the challenges hasn't been easy. I don't mean to reduce it and be like, Oh, I've got this, got this locked. Not at all. It's a consistent, <laughs> for, consistent for, battle. for those of you out there, there's a word for what he just described. And, you know, uh, of course me and Aaron know what that word, that phrase is, but it's called code switching. And it's something that you're taught to do and you have to do it. Like if you don't know how to code switch it, it makes a difference between like you being able to be successful or not. And it's, I don't know how to fit. I don't know how to quite describe how it feels to have to do it or to be so accustomed to doing it that you don't even realize you're doing it anymore. It's, yeah. it's, it's interesting. Yeah. And, and um, it's a matter, it's, it's a matter of when you learn it, right? So you're going to learn to code switch as a black person in the United States. It's just a matter of whether you learn it in time to do what you want to do when you want to do it. That's, that's how I've looked at it. Well, I mean, how do you, we're all talking about it now, like all the, the businesses are, and, and even individuals are, are being ex extremely introspective 
and how they want to move forward to solve these problems. I mean, and you know, you in your position right now, you're even probably having to think about like uh, how to move beyond the disparity issues that we have in this industry and, and beyond. And how do you think, what do you think are some of the ways we can do that or even think about it or contextualize it? Yeah, well, I mean, that's everything right now, right? Like this moment is so rare. It's hopefully once in a lifetime moment where eyes are open, ears are open, hearts are a little bit more open. Um, and it's tough. And I'll focus on the black community. It's tough on us, but for reasons that maybe not everyone is aware of, right? So it's in this moment where the mainstream society will say uh, is listening. What do we have to say? How do we get the most out of it? And the challenge is this. I'm in that group of people that to, to my to my roots, I feel that the the, the scourge of racism uh, going as far back as it goes, um, it's not a problem that our community um, is in position to solve. I mean, we that's are, yeah. It's not a position to solve. It's not something that we set up, maintain, propagated spread around the world. It's, it, it just isn't. And I'm talking about the, the, the true definition of that word, racism, right? Not the one that you hear on your local news uh, every other night, uh, not the one that you read in most newspapers, but the real uh, uh, definition, which includes this element of power, includes this inherent belief in inferior, inferiority, uh, and the active measures to do it. That's, that's the key part. You have to have the institutions to actually execute this stuff. So, Combating all that, eradicating it, erasing it, dealing with it, it's not something for our community to, uh, to, to solve, but we have to have some voice in this, in this moment right now, right? So it's almost like, this is a terrible analogy, but it's almost like, hey, you want to get rid of this? Now's your chance. How do we get rid of it? And it's kind of like, <laughs> ah, that's an unfair responsibility, but at the same time, you want to say something. You want to be careful. Um, so that's, that's what this moment calls for. And I'm not saying I know what the answer is. I mean, I'm, I'm getting through it bit by bit, day by day, one foot in front of the other, just like everyone else. But I think the way forward is to do what we've always said we want other people to do, which is pause in the moment, listen to your heart and express yourself as clearly and as concisely as you can in that moment for whatever the subject matter is. Um, that's the best we can do. That's what it's going to take to sustain whatever change we come up with. But right now, if I don't know, your local politician, your local police chief, your local, oh, I don't know, country club president, whatever your challenge is, they come up and you said, hey, what can I do right now? In that moment, speak from your heart. And if your heart is telling you to curse them out or, 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 or say something uh, uh, they're not going to understand, but it's genuine, then that's what it calls for. Like that's, it's, it's, it's going to continue to be messy. It's going to continue to be hard. It's going to continue to, to hurt. Um, but being comfortable in that hurt, being comfortable in that discomfort, that's what it's going to take. I'm convinced of that. And, and, and so, you know, sticking, staying in the process, staying with the, with the, with the clunkiness of it all, that's what we got to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'll put it that way. I'm not going to prescribe anything for anybody, but that's what I'm going to do. I mean, I, I think that what you're doing is authentic, really. I mean, it's, it's, it's strange to have had, to have built your life with that message and all of your actions and then all of a sudden be on a, on a platform to articulate that now, you know, it's like you've lived your whole life. Like, Hey, I'm here and I have things to contribute, <laughs> you know, equal to you. And now after all this time, it's like, all right, what is it? <laughs> yeah. um, well, you know, as, as gamers, right. I think that, Gamers have the unique ability to immerse themselves into to worlds that into worlds that don't exist yet. They're they're imaginative. They're problem solvers. So, like, we're in the perfect industry to to really progress forward. And with that being said, like, what is your hope? Like, right now we're in the now. Like, yeah, it's hard. But what does that look like when it's not hard anymore? Like, what what is your hope that this will be in like the next year? Or, or two? Um, I'll put it as simple as I can. We have to make it so that we all reach to define and understand the, the, the tentacles of racism 
and that we very simply make it uncool. It's uncool anymore to operate like that. Um, that's what it takes. That's what 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 our modern connected society is, is 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 good at defining what's cool and what isn't. That's what youth culture is very good at defining what's cool and what isn't. Um, in a weird way, that's what the nerd community and I use that as a term of endearment. Very good at defining what's cool and what isn't. Getting into those details, like you just said, um, I think that's what it takes. Uh, I, it's not a switch of the flip to make it happen, but it is a switch of the flip to go in that direction to decide. You know what? We got to make this uncool so that people don't want to do it. So that doing something, making a joke about someone who wears uh, a hat because of religious significance, that's not funny. That's not something to mess with. And it's and it's it's across the board. We all understand that, like we know our own names. That's what it takes. And the decision to go in that direction can be instant. The steps we're going to take are going to be clumsy. There's going to be setbacks. There's going to be hurt. There's going to be pain. There's going to be conversations. There's going to be understanding. But that willpower to head in that direction, that's what it takes. That's what this moment, hopefully, is is, is going to give us. Well, I mean, I I I I'm I have some similar hopes that we will not stop having this conversation and it will amount to something positive and progressive. But you know, Aaron, that people mm. going to click on this interview and they're going to see that you're the director of content strategy at PUBG. So mm. they didn't went through all this learning process, which was uncomfortable, yeah. <laughs> but like, maybe I can give them a nugget. Can you tell me something about what's happening in the PUBG world? So people are just like, you shit me. I thought this was going to be a <laughs> Oh, okay. What's your headline? Let's see. I can give headlines. Um, let's see. So you know we're on the seasonal system. We got, uh, we got new, a, a new season coming up soon. We're on season seven now. Um, let's see. The new season is going to be – how do we say this? What, what, what's been out there already? It's going to be somewhere we've been before, but it's going to be different. Oh, my God. That, no? <laughs> that's, not, that's not juicy enough? <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Let's try, Let's try this again. Let's try this again. People are playing season seven now. We introduced the, the train system. First time in Battle Royale. Everyone, no one likes to talk about that. But think about, use your imagination, what comes after that. Using that system, what else can we do using that, 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 that DNA of a train system? Hmm. I'll leave it at that. You can speculate. I'll let you speculate on what that could be. All right. I'm pretty sure somebody will speculate in the comments. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty sharp. Your audience is pretty sharp. You, you can guess. All right. Okay. Well, well, thank you for that little nugget. Um, but, but really, thank you for just being very honest and authentic in this moment because – as much as all of us want to have fun right now, it, it is really important to be introspective about how you want to move forward as a person, as a business, as a brand. And uh, this is the time to do it. So thank you for sharing your experience and sharing your expect, uh, you know, perspective in your time, Aaron. I really appreciate that. Well, again, I appreciate you having me. I didn't mean to get up on my little soapbox and, and preach as much as, as much as I did. Uh, video games are still, you know, the, the best art, science, and business I can think to be a part of. So this stuff is fun, but, you know, we bring ourselves into those spaces. So this is a time to change ourselves, make those spaces a little better. Well, thank you. And with that, is there anything that we can do to, to, to help or contribute to your future success? Um, sure. I mean, right now, if, if, if those who can throw a little money at some of these great organizations that are doing great work um, right now, uh, Campaign Zero is a good one. Uh, the Know Your Rights campaign, Know Your Rights camp, that's, uh, those are all great, great uh, uh, organizations that are doing good stuff. Um, I'm going to do what I can to support. Um, if you can't do that, uh, just follow what's in your heart. We all know when we were little, treat others the way you want to be treated. All that good stuff, it still works. It still applies. Just get out of your own space, get out of your own head, um, and, and, and try, to, try to stay there a little while. That, that's all I can ask. <laughs> that, that will help me, put it that way. Well, I appreciate it. And I'm pretty sure uh, the, the people who tune in for, for this particular interview will, too. So thank you. And I will be following you to see what's going to happen with this train system on PUBG. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bye.